Good morning and welcome to Sunrise Daily today. I'm Ayo Makinde. It's going to be a great day. Good morning. Welcome to Sunrise Daily on Channels Television. I am Bukola Samuel Wemimo. Well, many issues as usual will always catch attention, draw attention, literally drag attention. And one of them is that of um, the Conference of uh, Speakers and Heads of Parliament in Africa that had a meeting. Well, among other things discussed, one of those striking things is what, the, what came from the Speaker of the House of Representatives in Nigeria, who also is the convener of that meeting. I think it's best you listen to it yourself. It's been an intense two days conference by speakers of parliaments across Africa under the umbrella of the Conference of Speakers and Heads of African Parliaments, COSAP. For its first non-virtual conference since inception in October 2020, 14 heads of parliaments from Nigeria, Algeria, Cameroon, Kingdom of Eswatini, Ghana, Malawi, Rwanda, South Sudan, Sahrawi Arab Democratic Republic, Sao Tome and Principe, Senegal, South Africa and Zimbabwe have spent the last 48 hours deliberating on how to address some of Africa's challenges. This press conference is to highlight the observations and recommendations of COSAP. A continent that cannot feed itself, cannot lead itself. For Africa to lead in the 21st century, first it must learn to cater to its own needs and legislative interventions should prioritize and foster these. For the convener of the conference and speaker of the Nigerian House of Representatives, debt cancellation for African countries is a major concern for COSAP. We tackled first and foremost, and still tackling, the issue of debt cancellation as opposed to review of debts, which we all know about. We felt that debt cancellation will provide African countries with the much needed resources, will free up the much needed resources uh, to develop the continent. COSAP is however not unmindful of the endemic corruption in Africa, which has also hindered the continent's development. COSAP as, a, as an institution has made commitments, even signed commitments within ourselves and ready to commit to the, to the creditors that we would follow the money. We would appropriate the freedom funds and we would follow and monitor that money because, and that's where, where the issue of corruption came in, so that those monies are not diverted into other things that were not agreed upon. As Africa struggles to recover from the multifaceted effects of the COVID-19 pandemic, COSAP recognizes the crucial role that parliamentarians play as custodians of Africa's respective democracies and believes that African parliaments speaking with one voice will help Africa attain a common front on major issues for the common good of the continent. Well, so many issues were discussed, of course, as we said, part of what was also discussed at that meeting was that uh, countries with military junters should be blacklisted. But that one that you just heard the speaker say is actually something very, very interesting. Debt forgiveness for Africa. Absolutely. And the speaker is right. Well, Nigeria is at a time where there's a crunch and um, it truly, uh, it's worth considering that uh, you know, Nigeria and other African countries that deserve debt forgiveness be given debt forgiveness. You know, especially if you look at the debt profile, which is increasing, uh, which if you look at foreign reserves falling. You know, but one of the crucial points you raised at the start of this conversation before we came on is, does Nigeria deserve debt forgiveness? What has Nigeria done with debt forgiveness in the past? How did it account for you know, the foreign reserves of the last administration that ought to have been saved. And, you know, the speaker also talked about something very critical. He said, we will follow the money. Um, I, and there are structures for following the money if you consider um, oversighting functions of the National Assembly. But then again, when a certain government official comes and says that it is, the, it is members of the National Assembly that profit from projects, <laughs> then you know that the oversighters need oversighting. 
<laughs> you know, these are some of the issues. And the National Assembly has its work cut out for it. Certainly. If you also consider a report that, sa that says that budget, that's an independent tracking institution, has identified 460 projects, duplicated projects in the 2022 budget. I think the National Assembly should follow up on that. Well, they should learn to follow that money. But you know, when you talked about um, institutions that can follow the money, there are quite a few. And I'm going to go back to my sing song. The Auditor General's report, for God's sake, it, it looks or sounds like a no-brainer. But we've been having the Auditor General's report. If you go to the website of the Auditor General of the Federation, you'll see um, Auditor General's report since 2012. Um, well, maybe I missed it you probably may know whether or not anyone has been apprehended or questioned over some of the indictments in that report since 2012. And this is 2022, exactly 10 years ago. At least that, maybe that's not even the first, maybe that's the first, I don't know. Now, the, the most recent um, Auditor General's report, which is just about uh, maybe that of 2020, is probably out. Uh, what action has been taken on it? I guess we we'll wait to see. Uh, there have been questions around how effectively we actually do what we intend to do as we ought to do it. So mm -hmm. the Auditor General's report is one of those in instruments that government can use. And the interesting thing about that is that the chairman of the public accounts in the two chambers, I think, is usually the uh, someone from the opposition party. So it doesn't look like there is a collusion. So mm -hmm. the question mm -hmm. you are asking is how effectively has that helped us to follow the money? Then there is also talk around um, the audit law, making the office of the Auditor General of the Federal or State Government uh, independent or have more power, more bite to be able to take action, do things without the hamstrings or the chains of the executive, executive at any given point in time. So one is just wondering how significantly that is going to go. So that's another way to look at it. Now, the monies that have been forgiven us, I mean, let's, let's, let's go back in history. Don't forget mm -hmm. that uh, the, the foreign debt profile of $35 billion in 1999 was forgiven. And the government of Obasanjo arranged a buyback that see us wiping off $30 billion. Of course, almost immediately after that, that will begin to go back, you know, with the Umaru Yaradwa government, Jonathan government, and all. So one is wondering how all of this thing is going to go. I guess we wait to see how yeah. government is going to do that. You know, the, the structures are there, it, but people make up institutions. So I, I guess uh, those who make up institutions have to decide to do things differently so that we can get the much desired results that everyone is yearning for. And that's exactly what this whole thing is about. So that said, and hopefully uh, the authorities are taking notes as well from the people. If you have comments as well, please uh, drop it with us in uh, our tweets, follow. Uh, Sunrise Daily Now on Twitter, and of course you can send us an email. The email has been on the screen as well. Let's take a look at the papers this morning, and um, which one of them would you want to start with? I would go with the Guardian newspaper, of course, leading with uh, politics of 2023. The Guardian newspaper opens 2023. PDP may dump zoning as neck meets over autumn report. That's what you have on the lead of the paper and concerns mount over appointment of convention planning committee, court orders speedy hearing of suits challenging PDP's primary, and Umahi says if Jonathan joins APC, it'll be one of the wonders of this century. Yeah. I couldn't agree more. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm not even going to agree or disagree. That's, that, that's the lead of the paper. So many other uh, stories making the headlines, but... Let's uh, leave it there for the Guardian newspaper. And from the Guardian newspapers, let's move to leadership newspapers. What does it lead with? Senate amends electoral act, makes president, governors, others, statutory delegates. It seems as if the National Assembly was listening in on our conversation yesterday. Are you? <laughs> okay, so what are the riders? Reps summon emergency plenary to carry out own exercise today. Act undergoes three amendments in two months. CSOs insist on resignation of political appointees. INEC PAC, IPAC, 
uh, disagree over extension of party primaries by two months. APC closes sale of forms. Morgalu picks ADC nomination forms. Uh, what are the other interesting stories you can find in leadership this morning? Uh, by the top right corner of uh, the newspaper, you find fuel scarcity extends to northern states. Ayo, you have your question from yesterday answered. <laughs> and going further down, May 29, handover is sacrosanct, says presidency. Chidima confessed to drugging, stabbing, killing a tagger. Police tell court. Uh, that's the trial of the university student. Well, a Nigerian Tribune, right quick. Senate amends electoral act to allow president others vote at party congresses, primaries, reps to hold emergency plenary today. 32 CSOs insist on resignation of political office holders. Okay, that's on page five. So many other stories. Senate to intervene in ASU strike is also there. Um, let's rush to the next one. Mm. And to Daily Trust newspapers, it has, uh, you know, a headline that uh, captures my attention. Campaign, governance, compete for attention. And the writers say, Oshimbaju, Amechi, Ono, Ingige, others battle for delegates. Aids collecting allowances from government. Government has literally falling apart. That's coming from Kiari. You find details of that story or these stories on page four of the Daily Trust. Let's move to the top corner of the Daily Trust. Primaries, INEC rejects party's request to extend deadline by two months. Why turnaround maintenance fail to bring refineries to life? Uh, yet another ex explanation from the NNPC. I I'll be interested in what the NNPC has to say to that. Well, so many other things are interesting because if you check one of the front pages of some of the dailies, you'll find that we're at risk of another fuel scarcity because of a 500 billion naira debt. I don't even want to go to that right now. Well, so many issues to take on this morning. I would like to start early. So that's the papers this morning. We jump into the issues right after now. Well, so many issues to take on, especially when it concerns politics of the general elections of 2023, starting with the Ikitia National States coming up shortly. But then, that question of whether or not to extend the timeline is one of the issues we'll take on this morning with Yabagisani, who is chairman of the Inter-Party Advisory Council. Ayapaki joins us virtually. Good morning and thank you for joining us this morning. Well, first of all, so many people might be wondering, for instance, all of the parties had all the time in the world uh, four years before this general election. So what, in your opinion, would necessitate an extension that IPAC is asking for? Thank you very much for having me. Good morning, Nigerians. Uh, first of all, let me commend the good work that INEC has been doing uh, to entrench democracy and firm the roots of democracy in this country. Uh, you will recall that uh, before this time, the elections were just uh, uh, like anything goes. But today, we are able to have a law, that is the uh, 2022 electoral law, electoral the Act, that has introduced certain uh, features that will guarantee that we are going to have a free, fair, all-inclusive, and credible elections in this country. And the most important aspect of that, though, is the fact that we have a recourse now, meaning that if after everything is done and you are not satisfied, you can now go to the computers and be able to get your records and then tender it uh, wherever you may need to. I haven't said that uh, IPAC uh, is on the same page with INEC, but when you look at this electoral uh, uh, act itself that has been introduced, it took you know too much time really. It took the National Assembly and the Executive, you know, uh, I don't know, you know, too long, you know, for them to conclude, you know, the the uh, the processes that gave birth to this uh, very important piece of legislation. 
Uh, the filibustering is what, if we had done this long time ago and the parties were able to digest, you know, what this law is all about, until, you know, we will not by this time be saying the act, uh, asking uh, uh, INEC to extend, you know, the time for the primaries. Number two, you will recall that the time given by INEC to parties to conduct their primaries is between April 4th to June 3rd. You know, you know, between that since April 4th to now, we have had some holidays that were not factored into uh, INEC uh, program. You know, and this, uh, these holidays took about two weeks out of the, the time that uh, uh, the parties should have used, you know, to conduct, you know, make preparations towards uh, carrying out these uh, very important activities, which is the, the, the primaries. And you know that primaries, that is selection of candidates, is very, very important. It's the most fundamental aspect of getting it right. Because if we rush this process and we did not, you know, invest the time and resources required in ensuring that we have credible people that will deliver, you know, dividends of democracy to Nigerians, and 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 we make mistakes in this process. People would take litigations will just come, and care is not taken. May even uh, attempt to derail what we are trying to do because the attentions of the parties and even the INEC itself will be will be uh, taken away by litigations that will come because we we we, we had to rush, you know, through the process. Number 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 three. Today we are we are we are battling with the issue of fuel shortages. You know, the fuel shortage that has been introduced, you know, for, for, for reasons we don't know, it, it, well, nobody knows how long it's going to take. So it's, it's going to hamper movement. And and uh, and uh, these things will affect, you know, the ability of parties to do a, a, a very, you know, a, 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 a good, you know, a exercise in terms of having a good primaries that will be rank or free. So this is why, and we are not sure, I met themselves, you know, after our... Uh, 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 consultative engagement, you know, I'm sure, you know, by now we will be thinking, uh, we will have a second, you know, uh, thought about what they have said that they are going to do. Definitely, when you introduce, you know, uh, guidelines, uh, it doesn't speak well of you if you have to change it, you know, in the in the uh, in the you know middle of the of the uh, of the game. So, but this is things that are extraneous to the to the to the process. These are things that nobody planned. We didn't know these things are going to happen. We didn't, you know, or, or rather, when INEC was preparing the program, the, the holidays, for instance, were not factored into the, and, and there are realities. During holidays, you can't move, you know, you have to be, uh, uh, the door offices are open. And then now that we are battling with this question shortage, we will have problems of logistics. So this is why we are appealing to INEC, and, and, I, and INEC knows that we are being altruistic, that we are as, Passionate as INEC is to ensure that we get it right this time around, that this democracy, you know, succeeds. But, but uh, so en that is en why engineer Sani, I'd like to come in there, uh, particularly to um, you know talk about the validity of the reasons that uh, IPAC is giving for the extension of time. Most of the contentious issues informing uh, the back and forth on the amendment of the Electoral Act. Uh, were subjects of debate in the public space, uh, i.e. whether parties were going to have direct primaries or indirect primaries, i.e. the demand for um, electronic transmission of uh, electoral results and all of that. Uh, against that backdrop, we, I could add uh, other issues as well, but against that backdrop, shouldn't political parties have been uh, proactive rather than reactionary by by making their decisions tentatively, you know, um, debating on these issues behind closed doors ahead of this time, such that it would not now be racing against time. No, remember that even INEC itself had to adjust the timetable at one time when the uh, the bill was uh, given assent to by Mr. President. You know, election the presidential election was supposed to take place February 18th. They had to, you know, uh, adjust the timetable to accommodate, you know, the uh, the delays so that we will, uh, you know, will not be outside the constitution. You know, taking it now to February 25th, and, and the issue of direct or indirect premise of consensus is is not is not uh, an issue that will affect, you know, the timetable really, you know, in actual sense. That is not why we are asking for the for the extension, direct or indirect. You know, it's a, it's a, it's, it's an issue that parties, uh, depending on your uh, decision, I mean, of your NWC. If you choose to go direct, fine. 
you know, if you indirect or, or all of them are, are, are covered by the law. So we don't have any issues with that. What we have issues with is the time, the time frame that is given by INEC. It's too tight. That's what we are saying. That too tight in the sense that time that would have been used to, to, to carry out this exercise is being hampered by other extraneous factors that were not factored into the into the into the time frame. And the, the other point you must also understand is the fact that we are not in any way asking INEC to violate the constitution. The constitution says six, six months to the to the to the conduct of the elections, uh, the, the presidential elections in, in this case, you know, parties should conclude all processes and INEC should have finished everything about candidates and what have you. And, and, and then the two months we are asking for, we are still within that allowance given by the constitution. It won't, it will not affect the six months required by the constitution before INEC, you know, before we finish uh, the processes. And we are also aware that INEC has to do certain things by the time we finish our promise, like printing of ballot, uh, ballot papers, like other issues that they have to, of logistics and things like that. But now that they have introduced digitalization to their processes, we believe that the necessity of this request is, is that we, we it's not just frivolous. You know, it's something that came as a result of realities that are on ground now. And, and you, can't, you can't tell me that we are not having problems with, uh, with logistics in this country. That's a moment. And that, that the, the foil, foil shortages that have been, you know, that, that is, is, is happening now. You can't tell me that two weeks out of the program that's supposed to be 60 days is not an issue. It's an issue that you must factor in and thank God that we still have time. So I'm sure INEC knows that IPAD and political parties are very, very passionate about INEC getting it right. Because remember, this is one uh, election that is different from all other elections we are having. And this is why we, we, we want to make sure we don't create loopholes for those who are looking for ways by which they can probably frustrate you know, the, the, the exercise. You know, we, should, we shouldn't give that chance. I mean, when you rush anything, tendencies are that, chances are that, you will make mistakes. And people are there to capitalize on these mistakes you know, by, by calling for all sorts of uh, things that may not even go well. For, for, for the entire process that we want to embark upon. Well, so that is why we're asking for time. Yeah, engineers and the, you know, one of the issues that a number of people might also be asking right now is, I mean, look at the, the generally the political parties. I mean, this whole campaign of, uh, uh, this whole idea of, of uh, primaries, selecting candidates and all of that started, as far as INEC was concerned, April 4. Today is March 10. Oh, March 11, and I'm sorry, beg your pardon, May 11. And a number of people will be wondering, well, why are the parties waiting for all this while? It's oh, throughout last month, it would be like, it's, it looked like no one was doing anything, no activity whatsoever. Perhaps that is why I think about two, since about two weeks or so, even a month ago, ANEC had been saying to the parties, there will be no, no extension. Over and over again, INEC has been saying that perhaps trying to tell the political parties, get working. Maybe there are some other things happening behind the scene as far as the political parties are concerned uh, and which are not known. But the question then would no. be, Engineer Sonny, what were the parties waiting for all through April? No, no. Like I said, when we had our holidays, what can you do during the holiday? The national holiday. Uh, you know, that's the uh, uh, Just, just then, a second. Then, on that, then on that, I apologize. We both know, Engineer Sonny, that there is no holiday for politicians. We both know that. No, no, I don't. no. No, I no, mean, no, 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 but there, 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 there are official things that you must do getting some documents, you know, putting together what you need to put together to become a candidate, I mean, a, a, an aspirant on the political party platform. And plus, this is democracy. We have to give people a chance to, to, to come forward, to participate in the process. You know, it's not, it's not uh, something that uh, is so, so uh, straight jacket thing that, uh, you know, you railroad people to say, okay, go to this uh, because there's this timeline must meet and all. No, this democracy. And democracy presupposes that people are given that freedom, you know, to exercise their franchise. And what we are seeing, in essence, is that let us you know, uh, make haste, you know, uh, uh, slowly. That's all we're saying. So that we don't make unnecessary mistakes that later we'll regret that. Why didn't we allow those, you know, some, some allowance so that we can get this thing right? 
That's what, what we're saying. Some of those, Politicians what are, are as passionate. And, we, yeah. and you know, like a project, the more time you spend on any project at all, the more it costs you in terms of every resources that you have. So we ourselves are not asking for this time for, for the luxury of it. No, for the necessity of it. And we want to get it right. And what what are some the, of those the, things, the, Engineer this Sonny, that you outing, think this is the first outing, Nigerians... This is the first outing of both IDEC and ourselves on this yeah. law. This is the first outing. Yeah. And there are a lot of provisions in the electoral law that you must be careful how you go about it, you know, so that you don't get yourself bogged. We don't want a situation where courts will be declaring, you know, uh, winners, you know, of, of elections in this country. We want we want to have a, a, a much more robust, you know, democracy where the processes, you know, are, are, are delivers, you know, as as intended. Not to go to court on every every expense. Okay. Know, uh, uh, mistake. Now, one of the considerations that you are asking for, Engineer Sonny, on behalf of all the political parties is because, as you said, there are mistakes that could be made. What are some of yes. these mistakes that we have made in time past that you think this extension will address that INEC may not be aware of, for oh. which reason they are insisting there is no extension? Oh, the, the fact is that you must conduct your, your primaries you know, in accordance with the with the with the law, uh, the, like somebody, you know, all all the constitutional requirements, you know, are there of ensuring that the age of the person coming to contest and and uh, the fact that people are not in any way shortchanged, you know, by the political parties and in that, in advantage by mistake you may shortchange somebody. So, but when you have time to do things properly, submit your papers, allow the political parties to check these papers, and. You are able to 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 uh, 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 you know check and then ensure that what you are giving to INEC itself is in line with the requirements of the law. You know it, it, these are the things that you cannot uh, predict what can happen. You know a, a slightest mistake. This law is the first time we are coming out on this law to test this uh, electoral act in 2022. And some people may say that the, 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 some of the things that we are talking about have been there. No, not all of them have been there. You know, uh, and uh, the, the requirement is such that we need to be careful how we go about this. And we need to allow Nigerians also the space to participate in the democracy. We don't rush it. And in the end, at the end of the day, you know, some people that perhaps, you know, will give this country the kind of government we want, you know, maybe uh, uh, you know, uh, skimmed out, you know, just because we want to rush, 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 rush. We are saying all this because we know there's still enough time. You know, to do this. Engineer Sani, it seems like you have returned to my point. You talked about uh, time to conduct the primaries in accordance with the law. Wouldn't that seem to be uh, the more uh, valid, or the, you know, the real reason rather, not necessarily valid for the delay um, in the conduct of primaries? You know, for instance, some of the main political parties have for weeks been going back and forth on whether or not to pick the zoning option, which seems to be the tradition, or whether or not to throw the ticket open for which a decision has not emerged even now, you know, isn't that the real reason for the, for the delay? And it, there seems to be a lot of time wasting over um, managing all of these interests. No, 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 it's not, it's not, time, it's not time wasting. It's, uh, it's allowing Nigerians to have full, you know, uh, expression of uh, their... their, their uh, uh, peculiarities, you know. I mean, like uh, somebody's from this zone. How will the president go here or go there? And all these things. These are not things you rush. You know, these are things that you take your time to ensure that you assuage all manners of uh, uh, fears, of, of, of you know, considerations and things like that. So, and, and plus, also, you must remember that this act that we are talking about, even the National Assembly, as we speak today, they are still amending, you know, some uh, some aspects of the of the of the act to tell you that this is not something that is completely perfect yet you know and this and then and then, and then so so this is why we that's what we are saying you know they are, they are amending some aspects of the law you said it on your on your breaking and your news you know uh, before this time so so we 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 have to make haste slowly so we don't make avoidable mistakes that will cost us you know unnecessary you know a uh, 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 precious you know opportunity that we have today you know to give this country the leadership it deserves. And that's what we are talking about. Uh, governance is something that you don't rush. Selection of candidates is very, very fundamental. It's very important. We have to, we have to do it with the, with the, with the highest level of, 
of uh, of uh, of uh, in consideration, you know, that we can bring to it. You know, that's that, that's where we are where we are today. If we were able to select our leaders, recruitment of leadership in the manner that we're supposed to do it, perhaps we will not be battling with some of the problems we are battling with today. So this is why we must get it right this time around. Nigerians are waiting for something better than what we are having today. And the only way we can do it is when we follow this process with with uh, with the all with the highest sense of responsibility and caution, so that we, if we are we are on the side of caution, it's better that way than we, otherwise we find ourselves in, the, in so many court of laws, you know, with litigations. You know, we don't want to have that. We want to make sure we reduce chances of making mistakes. When you go to court, the court doesn't look at the mistakes. It doesn't say, oh, this is the first time you are trying this law. Uh, that uh, yes, no. They just look at the straight into the what the law says, and they will make their ruling based on that. And we are good worse for you know. So this is politics. It is not uh, in, uh, a, a, a straight jacket thing. And then uh, politics has so many issues that you must take into consideration before you arrive at a decision. Like uh, then, like you said, you know, this issue of zoning, this issue of you know, so many other issues coming up. We have to deal with them and properly in the interest of this country so that we don't end up with a, with a scenario that all of us will regret. Uh, and it's give, talking about the process now and mistakes, given the new dynamics of the Electoral Act, i.e. Uh, electronic transmission of uh, results and e-voting and all of that, how prepared are political parties for the 2023 general elections, particularly in terms of sensitization of voters? Well, this is one thing that uh, uh, I believe that political parties, you know, are doing. We well, that is why you, I'm sure you will be seeing parties, you know, even the meetings they were holding, you know, trying to talk to this zone, talk to that zone, explain to them that this is what it's all about. It's not that they, they want to in any way uh, uh, use up or you know deny, you know, any uh, section of the country opportunity to to govern this country. It is the fact that we need to have something that Nigerians will be proud of, something that can give this country that kind of leap forward, great leap forward that we need economically, socially, and politically. That is why we need to take the, the much time we are taking. We are voter education, uh, the, 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 the issue of uh, uh, you know, the, 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 uh, campaigning and things like that is going on. You know, But there are fundamental issues that we must address, and it requires time. That's what we are talking about. That's why you are having parties not be able to say, okay, this is where we are bringing our president from, you know, this side of the country. It's our reality that we must deal with. We can't sweep it under the carpet and then get ourselves into some kind of partner that, you know, everybody will now say, well, we told you, you know, that this is this, that we can't, we can't make it. Nigeria is a country that people look up to, the whole world look up to us for leadership, especially on the continent of Africa. If we take time to do it right, there's nothing wrong with that. Provided we do not violate the grand norm, which is the constitution of this country. The grand norm has not been touched by what we are asking for. We are all saying that, yes, I may need to put more resources, time, and energy, but it is resources and energy that we will well spend because we are avoiding unnecessary pitfalls and things that we can predict will happen. When you do things in health, even in your personal life, you are bound to make mistakes. That's all we are saying. Mm. Well, uh, Engineer Sonny, Still on that matter, you know, my, my colleague asked a fundamental question that I think we need to interrogate a little further. But this issue, again, that you have just mentioned now again, or reiterated about INEC insisting, now that INEC has insisted again, reiterated his insistence that there will be no extension to the timelines of the elections and that uh, June, the June 3rd date is sacrosanct. What are the options for political parties? Dialogue, and that's what we're doing with INEC because we want to call the attention to we're all human beings, nobody is perfect in whatever you are doing. I started just an example of National Assembly again, rushing back quickly to take a second look at some, some of the provisions of the of the act. You know, who knows if the, if the National Assembly in doing that now discovers that oh, we also have to take, take into, uh, another look into the issue of timelines and things like that. I mean, we're human beings, and this is a human system, this is a social system. This is not uh, anything that uh, is so mechanistic that you know, why we do this, we can't learn. We are not in a military administration. We are in a democracy. Democracy is about allowing people to have freedom of expression, of association, of you know how they are governed. And we are talking about how we are governed. That selection process of leadership is crucial 
to to the to, to democ survival of democracy in this country. We have seen what has happened, you know, when we did it the way we have been doing it. So this is what we are saying. And I neck like us, like we all know, you know, the, believe me, you are the finest brains in that in that uh, organization today. We are so proud of them. We know that they know what we are talking about. We know they will come out to say, well, in because this is the realities that we are talking about, and because we want to get it right. We are not competing with anybody that somebody will get there before us. No, this is us. This is Nigeria. We are not competing with them. There are other countries who are competing with us. We should do it right. You know, we okay. shouldn't say we have a timeline we, well, and, then, and then we become slaves to that timeline. No. Even when we know that there's a mistake. You don't allow a mistake. If you, if you don't correct a mistake, the mistake will stop you. That's why we want to stop whatever we have seen as not perfect or not pro appropriate as we are. They are human beings. We are human beings. National Assembly, we have that they are human beings. You know, like I said, they are rushing to check, to, to again, take another look at what they have given to even INEC and all of us. Okay. So there's nothing wrong. Nobody will lose face in this matter. It is being nationalistic and being uh, 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 alive to your resolutions that will make you, you know, to say, okay, let me step back and then see, is this okay? No, it's not okay. okay. I mean, it takes knowledge to know that you are wrong. You know, if you are wrong, if you are, it's only you are not knowledgeable that you don't even know you are wrong. If you discover you are wrong, it takes, it doesn't, it's just ordinary, you know, for you to discover that something is wrong. Perhaps, so Engineer Sonny, yeah. yes. perhaps, uh, you know, INEP could have good reason to insist so far. Uh, well, you're hoping that, you know, maybe INEP would have a rethink on the issue and perhaps, perhaps not. In the event that INEP doesn't change its mind and insists on this timeline, what are the options for the parties? No, I, I I don't think INEC will throw that line because INEC is more passionate. They are more com they are they are as committed as we are. They want it to succeed. They don't just want to do a job for the sake of doing it. They are not doing it. They are not robots. You know, they are human beings. They, they, they I mean, this is a social system. This well, is a system you, that you don't. It's have the same thing. Over I mean, all and yes, only, a, I, I, we, we hear you so on we, that. We but that the in the event we, that INEC yeah. insists that the timeline will not be altered, what are the options? What are the risks? That, that has no space in a democracy. Democracy allows you so much, you know, uh, latitude. There's nothing cast in stone in democracy. You know, when people say this is what we want. So I make we not throw that line. That's what I'm telling you. We, we are on the same page with them. We, we, we feel their pains. We know that it will, be, it will mean more work for them. But more work for something better for all, for, for, all, for all of us. We are doing it for Nigerians, not for ourselves. INEC is not there for, for INEC themselves. They are doing it for Nigeria. And they are more passionate, they are more committed, they are even as committed as we are. And, and, know, Engineer Sonny, you, 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 seem to sound, you seem to sound confident that uh, INEC is going to uh, eventually bow to pressure and um, you know, extend the <laughs> timeline for primaries. But do you forget the limitations from the new electoral law that you know, it has now placed on political parties? For instance, uh, it says, um, as it affects conflict, um, specifically clause 80, um, 84, 10 to 3 in the electoral law, limits courts from stopping party primaries or elections from holding. It states nothing in this section shall empower the courts to stop the holding of primaries or general elections under the act pending the determination of a suit. So these are some of the limitations that the new electoral law has placed on political parties in the case of conflict. Are you aware of this? And are you, um, you know, racing against time just in case INEC does not grant your request to extend the primaries? No, no, you see, you see, nobody is uh, racing. We're not, we're not just uh, sitting down doing nothing. INEC knows that uh, they say obey before complain. What they have given to us, all of us are rushing to obey. But we've discovered that we are bound to make mistakes, costly mistakes, that even INEC letter will not be happy with what has happened. And that's why we are there. You know, we are supposed to work together. It's not like a master-slave kind of thing. We are, we are together in it. You know, we, we have to cooperate, collaborate, and ensure that we get this process, you know, that, that, in, in such a manner that Nigerians will be happy with what we are doing. You know, uh, we, we are the same with INEC, believe with me, as far as the goal is concerned. You know, it's just that INEC can, can discover something and call us and say, change this. We can also call INEC and say, please, take a second look at this. And, and it will not be because we don't want them to succeed. No. You know, if whatever happens, in fact, we are the biggest beneficiaries in this, in this process. INEC's job is just to supervise. 
That's all, and ensure that we do it right. We are the ones that will benefit from it end of the day. It's not INEC. So if we, the beneficiaries, are saying that, look at it this way. And the convention all over the world is that when we are doing anything, you know, you, you, you involve the stakeholders so that they, perhaps they may know certain things that you don't know. And the way you involve them, they own the process. We now, if this had happened, we will own this process. We will own these timelines. But this is not something that, you know, we believe uh, we should, uh, we should be, 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 be so uh, fixed on, you know. We, 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 we know why we are saying what we are saying. And I also know uh, that we, we mean well. We mean well. So that nobody is trying to, uh, to rubbish INEC at all. You know, if anything, INEC knows that we are, we are one of the biggest defenders of INEC in any way, any way at all, because we are happy with what they are doing. Engineer Sonny, do you think INEC preempted this request by the political parties by reiterating over and over and over again that there will be no extension to the timelines, knowing that the parties would come? They kept saying it for about between two weeks and one month now. Do you think they preempted you? Well, well, they, 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 I'm not sure. I never will not do anything unto us, you know, to political parties. Believe you me, because our success is their success. So if they are saying it, they are saying it no, no. because they want parties to be to be uh, uh, alive to their responsibilities, which we are, and we are saying that yes, we are going to do this, but let us do it this way. My, my that's all we are saying. The There's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with Isaac has been has been saying wow. because it's, they are saying it because they believe that you know we we should uh, we should uh, be uh, like I said you know uh, we are alive to what we are supposed to do and we are alive to what we are supposed to do. Mm. But the issue now is that why did we have the consultative the, the engagement? Why did they uh, have this quarterly uh, consultative uh, uh, forum with political parties? Why? It's because of this, some of these issues. We come together and say, okay, let's take a look at what we have done so far. Take a look at what we want to do from here on. Perhaps, and, and Engineer then, Sony, during this consultation, INEC during this preempted. Just a second. Perhaps INEC no, no, was expecting. Just a second. Perhaps the INEC yes. was saying that, okay, because the parties weren't doing anything for a significant while, so it, it would seem. And that, mm -hmm. that's why INEC kept saying, you guys get to work. There will be no extension. Get to work. There will be no extension. But now there seems to be a rush all over the place. So perhaps that's why. I'm, so that's why I'm asking: Could INEC had preempted the political parties, seeing that no activity was actually happening early enough? In order to avoid the rush know. that you are alleging. I, 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 what I'm telling you, what I'm telling you is that the essence of consultative, you know, uh, uh, you know, form which we normally have is INEC is to take a look at what we have done from the last you know, meeting to the next one, like the one we had yesterday. And also to now you know, uh, tell INEC what we think about what we plan to do from, to, from yesterday to another three months that we are going to meet again. So, and then when you call people for meetings, of course, you are, we are not robots. They don't expect us to say yes, yes, yes to everything they have done. They expect us to to interrogate. They expect us to compare, to to to, to uh, exchange, you know, ideas. We they are the regulatory agency. We are the ones that are implementing. Engineer Sonny, can I ask you? Can I ask you this? Um, the notice, the timeline, was put out on yes. February twenty six. The question yes. anyone would want to ask is February twenty eight. February twenty six of this year. Being an organized institution, each of the political parties, and that's the timeline. You know, the publication was made on the 28th, but it was signed on the 26th of, of uh, February 2022 and made public to everybody at the time. And then it continued that way, on and on and on until 2023. The question anyone will be asking you now is, what were the parties waiting for before now? Parties were not waiting for anything. The parties were politicking. And uh, because that's what we are there for. We are not there to just rush the country into things that we know will not all go well for the country at the end of the day. The issues that Madame raised, or somebody raised it here, of you know where the president should come from, whether you want to believe it or not, it's an issue that this country must get right. We don't want to you know, end up you know, with a, a crisis ridden you know, uh, environment as, uh, you know, because we just conduct elections for the sake of conducting them. I think doesn't want that too either. 
you know, they want to see how we minimize crisis, how we minimize, you know, all this uh, uh, unnecessary uh, uh, tension that okay. you have well, in the quality. Well, and the only yeah. way to do it is to give time to consult. You can, I'm sure you are aware. Engineers, People have been engineer Sani, this country, consulting engineer Sani. with various, you know, stakeholders in the country. You know, you don't do that within the span of uh, say, okay, we'll give you a timetable, get it done. Yes, you can get it done, but this is politics. You know, it's not like it, it would seem as if we're not getting anywhere with what the parties were doing with all of the time. Uh, and in response like to that, somewhere. I'd like to say that the issue about where the president yeah. should come from is, you, is perhaps as old as Nigeria press. itself. But my, my colleague said earlier that we should interrogate uh, the issue about the preparation of um, parties for the election a bit further. And in your response to that was that indeed parties have been carrying out uh, voter education and sensitization activities. Unless we have missed it, I'd like you to talk a bit more about what political parties have been doing across board to prepare uh, Nigerian voters for, uh, you know, the new introductions into the electoral process ahead of 2023. Oh, parties that have been doing quite a lot. Uh, like at uh, IPAC in a level, we will be having meetings, we'll be having workshops, we're having retreats, you know, not, not for anything, but to, to, to discuss how do we get this exercise right, especially the one, the one that concerns us in selection of leadership. How do we recruit leadership in the, into uh, offices in this country? So, and, and that is not something that you just, you do, you know, with any, any haste, no. And, and uh, you say you don't see participate. Ha, you people have been covering meetings that have been taking place, you know, all over the country. You know, you see that this group will meet today to, uh, they will travel to this zone, travel to this place. You, you see candidates move all over the place trying to recruit delegates, you know, for their, for their exercise. You know, meetings have been taking place with the uh, cultural associations, with uh, the, uh, the CSOs, uh, students, what have you. So much is, been, is happening, but the fact of the matter is that we need to get this exercise right. And to get it right, we need time. That's all we're saying. And the you've time also we are referring to asking. Yes. You've also retreated something over and over again, in engineers, and I think it is applaudable. And that is the fact that we need to get it right. We need to get the selection right. One of the issues a number of people have been uh, considering that should be on the table at the political party candidate level before they become aspirants are the governance issues. And so the question then would be, what are those issues that you, as chairman of IPAC, will be saying, maybe all political parties should factor them in? For instance, uh, there are those who are wondering, how come local governments are not as autonomous as they ought to be? There are those who are wondering, once they, on the front page of one of the dailies this morning, we have a, a story that talks about governance and politicking competing. So what are the things that you think the political parties at the political party level should make election issues so that governance starts from the political parties and not, be, uh, not after they become aspirants, but as candidates? Well, I'm glad you mentioned local government, which is the, uh, the closest tier to the masses. You know? And if you can't get it right there, believe you me, uh, you know, once it's, it's, uh, we miss that, and, and for long, a long time we've been missing getting, you know, politics and elections in particular right at that, you know, level of the governance. And and that's why if you if you if you are following uh, IPAD, we have said that we may boycott future local government elections because we have observed that there are some parties that are using other parties to to uh, 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 give credibility to crime, you know, because you know, if you watch, you know, closely, what happens at local government elections in this country is an organized crime. You know, it's, uh, how can you say that only one party wins all the councillors, all the chairmen of local government? And then we're now saying that we cannot be used, you know, to, 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 to entrench, you know, uh, uh, organized crime in this country. So we have, we have told the, 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 some of these governors, you know, because it's governors that are that are, that are the culprit here. You know, they're the one. I, I know that National Assembly has listed the issue of uh, uh, transferring the conduct of elections at local government to INEC, so that at least we can have some uh, sanity in that. It's, it's in the bill. It's in the amendment, the constitutional, constitutional amendment, uh, you know, uh, process. So, but 
we are sounding a word of warning that if governors prostrate that, then some of the political parties, you know, some of the political parties, all of us, aside from the three or two who wear the the the, the host way that uh, where they have governments, you know, uh, always, you know, uh, make a mockery of democracy, we will, will buy court the elections, you know. So, so, so that's one step, one thing that IPAC is, is is doing, and and like I told you. IPAC has been organizing workshops, you know, uh, retreats and things like that to address issues like how do we come by good governance in this country? The country should not be just about politicking, about campaigning. No. How do we get governance? Because that's what democracy is all about. Dividends of democracy. How do we deliver it? And, and, and these are things that recruitment of leadership is at the bottom of it. You know, if you don't have the right process, you don't have the right people at the right places, you will not be able to solve that problem because the, the, the rat race issue that, you know, style that we have of of, uh, of uh, primaries and things like that, you know, we don't want to go on with that. That's why we are saying that, we are telling IMEC that we want to get it right this time around because that process, that, that's the beginning of the process. Believe you me, if we don't take care and get this beginning of the primaries right, nothing will be... Uh, 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 you know, in the way that we want it, you know, you, everything, everything until uh, the end of the uh, until you have a government would just be, uh, you know, foul. And we don't want a situation where we end up with governments that cannot deliver. You know, that will uh, put us in, in, in economic retrogression, insecurity, and what have you. But that which is, which is, which is where well, what we all want, uh, Engineer Sonny. And, uh, yeah, that, and you have and, spoken and to, to you know, yes. you know very well that to get it, you have to do your work, you Absolutely. know, uh, with, with the utmost Absolutely. caution yeah. and take time to do it. Thing. Well, we, we have to, on. yeah, we, we, we just have to let him go, you know, right now. Um, well, we, ha we have to thank you very much for your time this morning, Engineer Yabagi Sonny, Chairman, Inter-Party Advisory Council, IPAC. Thank you so much for joining us this morning and for giving I'm us I'm also the Chairman, Action Democratic Party, ADP. Thank oh, you, well, thank you very much. Now Engineer we know. Yabagi thank Sonny. you so much for being a part of our conversation. Well, it's an endless conversation with so many other things, you know, uh, you know, that, that need to be raised. One of those issues is the conclusion of the Senate yesterday concerning an, a section of the Electoral Act. And there's an expectation that the House of Representatives will concur today. That's next on our list this morning. Stay with us. Professor Paul Ananaba joins us this morning. He is a senior advocate of Nigeria and of course, a legal practitioner. Thanks for joining us this morning. Thank you, my brother. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah, you know, um, maybe we should, you know, cue in from where we ended that conversation, the back and forth between the Inter-Party Advisory Council and INEC. The IPAC is saying, we want you to extend the date by at least one month. And INEC is saying there will be no extension or review of the election timeline. What do you think is happening here? I do not know what is happening. <clears throat> I can only speak on what I'm seeing, what is, uh, uh, what I listened to the interview uh, just before I came in. And um, I got a bit worried uh, because uh, it looks to me like the IPAC uh, are sure that they will dictate to INEC. That's what I made out of that interview. Because the questions were very clear. Um, we are Nigerians and we should love this country and do the best for this country. Our constitution is our supreme law and document. That is why the world independent is in the INEC. Of course, if you go back, you would have had Federal Electoral Commission, FEDECO. You would have had National Electoral Commission. We've had all, all that. But now what we have under this present constitution is independent National Electoral Commission. And the constitution says the management of election rests with INEC, not with IPAC. Now I'm happy that INEC had said that they will not shift the dates and the schedules. These schedules have been published months, months back. 
And every political party knows that elections don't come last Christmas. Elections have been there. We already know the range of time elections will hold after this, one, after this uh, 2023. We know that in 2027, there will be election. What, what, is, what is the business of political parties beyond that? That to get ready for the elections. My neck publishes, gives notice based on the constitution, and uh, there's a call now to extend. And uh, if you extend the primaries, uh, well, it, it wouldn't matter. We don't want to get it wrong. Uh, then what stops IPAC or any other set of people from saying, you know what, this election, there's a lot of uh, violence, banditry in the country. So let's, uh, let's shift the election itself. So I don't think uh, INEC was wrong in rejecting that. I support INEC. It is INEC that will look at the, its shadows. And if it finds that it needs to adjust, it will address this country and tell the Nigerians why it will do so. And being an independent uh, body set up by the Constitution for that purpose. I want to plead with several groups in this country to allow INEC to do its job. Some of these unsolicited um, advice made public. Uh, you, you cannot advise and stop another group from advising. That's the point many, many of us should get clearly. Uh, if uh, IPAC advises INEC to take, do this, and INEC says no, because from the interview, as I saw, the, the uh, Lajistani was saying, well, uh, you were asking, uh, which is, uh, is, uh, what if? One said, no, INEC will, no, INEC will do it. So, uh, I, no, if, if, I, if INEC then moves, it will, it will affect my confidence in INEC mm. Mm. from what I've just heard. Because the man said, don't worry about what INEC repeatedly saying. INEC will say that, but INEC will move. So if INEC now moves, uh, if INEC now says tomorrow, uh, we are going to do this and this, and I'll say, I will know that well, maybe or maybe not. Well, yeah. so, so that is a problem that will raise. And finally on that point, when you are just the shadows, you may be taking us back to the what amendments of the Electoral Act had gone to cure. And you now, you now put so much pressure on INEC and on the electoral process. We need to conclude even election petitions in good time. We need to stop the era of people staying in government offices and using government, government money and paraphernalia to pursue their petitions. And starting early helps everyone. Why must we, why, where has IPAC been from the time the, the um, shadows were published? And you look at the reasons being given, religious ceremonies and all that, we took some days. So that's why we should, should move okay. such a serious... Um, so I think that I next should stick to what they, they are scheduled for the purpose of maintaining that independence and, maintain, and winning the confidence of the rest of, of us who think that INEC is doing well and should continue. You will, you will recall that some of the elections that had happened, there were predictions of doom. And INEC had said, no, we can get it right. And they moved on, organized elections, and they moved on better than even everybody predicted. Issues that uh, you know, uh, Engineer Sonny raised, which you have also referenced now, is that of the Electoral Act. You know, that he said that, that took a little while. But it, it would seem like even the, the Electoral Act is not done now. 
this with this new amendment being proposed by uh, the, the Senate and the National Assembly, Electoral Act 848 um, is, is being proposed for an amendment. I don't know if we can bring that up now. Uh, the only thing as far as uh, the Senate is concerned about that one is that there is an element, there is a part of it that is leaving out some, some part of it. It says, for instance, the original section that is being amended says a political party that adopts the system of indirect primaries for its candidates shall clearly outline in its constitution and file the procedure for the democratic election of delegates to vote at the convention, congress, or meeting. That's the one that is being amended. So I'm wondering what, what, what you make you know, of that. Well, this is the law as we know today. <clears throat> and. Um, Section 4 of the Constitution allows the National Assembly to amend, to make laws and amend them. We are not worried about that. It, 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 it's only just passed through the Senate. It will also go to the House of Reps. Even though we have been told it is likely that the House of Reps will uh, uh, also agree with that, some process will go. <clears throat> and then the president will be expected to give us those those are those are process issues they are not a problem to democracy but we should remain on what the law is as of today now you'll be wondering why an electoral act that has not been practiced not been tested there's so much energy and speed to get it amended um, you'll be asking whether it is because it touches on politics and elections itself, so that um, uh, members of the National Assembly themselves uh, may be beneficiaries. Because if these are three delegates we, uh, will vote, it, it, members of the National Assembly became, we will become automatic delegates. That, that's what it looks like. So, uh, please, before the election, uh, add us, add us, that kind of... Um... I, I, and that's where I want to ask. I wonder I'm, if I'm alone on this. What is the relationship between the now controversial Section 84.12 and Section 84.8 that the National Assembly has amended? It, 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 it goes into, you see, my understanding is that the National Assembly will want an electoral a primaries where they will have a better hold than where the party machinery in their states all, almost heard by the governors doesn't affect them. Because when you look at the politicking, if it is the uh, direct primaries, it is easier. It's easier for, you know, the, the, the National Assembly uh, uh, um, people to get more people to vote for them. But if it is indirect, <clears throat> the state machinery decides who the primaries, the, the the delegates, sir. That, you know, raises questions on my mind as well. The, the, <laughs> what the delegates have been determined, will be determined by some type of electoral college. You know, and, and you will not wake up and become that delegate. You, you will be that delegate if the machinery of state, the political machinery, says you will be delegate. So... Uh, we, we cannot discuss on television how they will arrive at that. But you know, from what I, I see in that law, a political party that adopts a system of indirect primary for the choice of his candidate shall clearly outline in its procedure for the. It doesn't say here. Forgive me. Maybe I'm just being. I'm just ignorant or naive. It doesn't say here. It says that it's the political party that adopts it. I'm talking about the machinery of the party. That machinery of the party doesn't hang in the air. 
it goes at the world level. It goes, it goes, it goes, it goes at the local government yeah. level. It goes at the state level. But doesn't that speak to, for me, I mean, that anyone who is not uh, informed in this politicking, so to speak, will be wondering, doesn't that question the camaraderie, if any, between the members of the same political party from the states. For instance, the, the Senate, members of the Senate, especially those who are from the same political party, they are supposed to be working together for the development of their states. Yeah. Members yeah. of the House of Representatives in the National Assembly are supposed to be working in cahoot with their governor for the development of the state and good governance of the people. Or oh, am I missing something there are, here? There are, there are many scenarios there. You are looking at is and ought. They ought to. But the East argument is, is that what happens in many states? The state governors are not in sync with uh, those in the House of Reps or Senate from their states. And it is complicated where uh, the federal lawmaker is in another political party and the governor is in another political party. So all kinds of things play out. You look at the cross-carpeting. Those cross-carpeting becomes visible only when it is announced. When it is not announced, some people who are in PDP, but they're actually APC or ABGA. They're in, they are in, uh, in AP, APC, but they're actually PDP or ABGA. It happens. So those are the things that play out. And even... So, so you look at even the people you call the head of the governor or the state and all that. It's some of us. My brother, there is no political ideology. What that law envisaged was a situation where there is a political ideology in which if you're a social democrat, everybody says social democrat. And we told the social democrat perspective. And that's when you bring in political polls to say, this is how this party is likely to vote. But to, in Nigeria, a person that is APC this night can be PDP tomorrow. A person that's PDP this night can be APC tomorrow. And that's why those judgments of court that began to check uh, political halotry or jumpology should have, been, should have been supported to bring some degree of sanity. If that sanity is not there, all this turbulence and will continue. If we have ideology, then they will all reason along the same line. Just so we don't lose the trail of uh, statutory delegates, now what is the difference between a statutory delegate and a political appointee? And based on this amendment that the House of Reps is expected to concur with today, who are we going to be seeing uh, as statutory delegate in the primaries that will be... Listed out. Yeah. They've been listed out in the document. Um, president, vice president, governor, vice, deputy governor, members of uh, 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 um, the National Assembly, uh, and all that goes out to local government, chairman of the party at local government and um, state and all that. So it, 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 it also becomes unwieldy. It also... It also becomes expensive, assuming that primaries will be done in Medugri. All these people will have to travel to Medugri, from Abiyokuta to Medugri, from Sokoto to Medugri for that process. So I, I, I'm not so much concerned about the cost and all that, but I'm saying the, the simpler it is, the less complicated it is. And, and when all these complicated, to take care of these complications, that's why INEC has to start in good time. So that if there are issues, they can be addressed. You, I, I think the, the subject of the conversation that my colleague is asking for is a, a comparison or maybe some, some deducing. Just, just a second. Now, the law as is, forbids political appointees to be part of that process. How do political appointees, just for the sake of clarity, for those who may not understand or may be confused, how does a political appointee 
differ from a statutory delegate? Uh, a political appointee is an appointee of mostly the governor and the president. Now, um, a member of the National Assembly is not a political appointee. Now, when you add these political appointees, it will further bloat. Now, the, the statutory delegates are because of their position. Members of, the, like I said, the end of UC and all that National Assembly. You are because you're a governor. I would ask because whether I like, I like your face or not. Local state chairman, state functionaries of the party. These are statutory. But when you talk about political appointees, they are the special assistants of the governor, the commissioners, and all that. Ministers. Yes. Okay. So the some states will have four hundred. Uh, of such. So when you add all that, and, and you remember, before the, even the primary start, before these people are going to vote, if you are not in the good books of government, you have already lost the election. Mm -hmm. Yes, because he who pays the piper, you know. Are you, are you, are you concerned, um, Prof, that this particular section that is being amended is only speaking to indirect primaries? Yes. Not direct, not yeah. consensus. If you haven't done everybody, is, is, is there is there an, is there an indication anywhere from that allusion? The, the, the indication is people are racing. That's what I was saying. If it is direct, the hold of the system on the outcome of the primaries is a lot watered down. But if it's indirect, the system goes as it has always been. So you won't, you don't, your chances are very slim if the powers that be are, again, are not with you. Now, Prof, the parties have until June the 3rd, you know, as deadline, to tidy up their houses and yes. be done with their primaries. This amendment has been done on the 10th of May. Um, it, it, not the, 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 the amendment bill. Yes. The bill. Are, are you confident that uh, it would get the assent of the executive before that uh, time frame? And uh, do you think we're headed for some sort of constitutional crisis if. I, I don't think so. We've always, we uh, always sorted out. The, I don't want to go into the politics of uh, assent to bills. Um, I'm yet to see a bill in the last uh, 10 years that just went to the executive and was signed almost immediately without uh, objections, taking it back and forth. Uh, that is a discussion for another day. But for today, what we have seen is that the Senate has passed it. And um, I expect that uh, all that we do as a country, we should watch the effect on the overall pro project. If that, um, as, as we speak, political parties have put up their own shadow base on INEC. In many places, delegates to primaries have already been selected. When you undertake some amendments that now affects in any way those already chosen. If that June thought, with the June thought already in place, it will put the electoral process under pressure. Now, um, why wouldn't we first run a first run of this electoral, new electoral act. And then, if we find loopholes on amendments or lacunas, we can do a comprehensive amendment mm. and not um, beat. This one, why is this chosen out of every other thing? Because those who are pushing to an amendment are also beneficiaries. There are major issues that are affecting Nigerians. In Abuja today, there are four queues. Um, people are dying literally of things they shouldn't because the situation is difficult. We elect lawmakers, we elect the executive, 
to make sure that things are improved. Nobody will say that he's not aware that things are tough. There are very, very urgent issues, health issues. As is on strike, I have not seen that being on the front burner, even in the National Assembly, giving this type of speed. Well, incidentally, the Senate was it, as it was yesterday that the Senate is saying that they're going to intervene. They are the going to. Yes. But they've already <laughs> intervened in a, amending a new law. <laughs> so that's, that's, this, is, this is the point. Okay. Yeah, well, I, I want to. Okay, I want to follow up on uh, a point that you made that uh, we should test run this electoral uh, law, and then if there are errors, you know, we can look into that subsequently. Yesterday, we had a very profound conversation on, you know, some aspects of the law uh, that uh, some are questioning, you know, just to allow them to pursue their uh, ambition, which is, um, you know, the, the question about whether or not the CBN governor should be a, an aspirant in this election. Uh, his lawyers are saying, look, under Section 137 of the Constitution... 1G. Uh, yeah, he is not a political appointee. Is that so, a, so what is, is he? Is that an error, you know, of the Electoral Act that was not anticipated? And what are the other errors <clears throat> that you think should be, should, should, should be given a second look and a second thought, you know, ahead? So that uh, in the future, lawyers don't take advantage of those loopholes, you know, and make arguments in court that will, you know, delay and complicate the electoral process. Well, um, that, that, that's, that's, that's huge. Uh, um, the electoral art doesn't just come from the blues. There were uh, debates, there were public hearings, and electoral act amendment takes a while, and it, it comes from in, in observers and, and, and stakeholders. Now, you first, the, whether the uh, CBN governor uh, is a political appointee, Arguments can go anywhere they, can, they want to go. My local understanding of uh, the office of a CBN governor is that he's appointed by the president. I don't know whether he's elected. I don't think so. I believe he's appointed. If there's any other meaning of a political appointee, I would like to know. I believe he's appointed. And that is why when he's done his turn on this present Stephen Gong, when he said now he was, he was reappointed. He was reappointed. In fact, in the first time he could have gone to Senate for approval, he did reappointment, no Senate. So I don't understand the argument that he's not a political appointee. Uh, he's a public servant. Uh, so it's only Section 318, uh, definition of a civil servant and all that. Yes, people are titled to the arguments. I think that beyond all those arguments, our economy is under stress. Mm. Section 9 of the CBN Act is very clear. Um, running for presidency of Nigeria is not a Tea Party. You cannot be a CBN governor and, a, and running for presidential tickets and you say it is not uh, going to affect Section 9 of the CBN Act, you are saying that um, if the man, the time used to go to Sokoto, uh, Kanu, uh, Rivers to address delegates, to declare, if he was to do that, whose time is it? It's not part of the time we are paying for in his employment. Okay. So the, the, these are the, now, much more. It's so, it's so sensitive a position that it's one of those that we cannot afford, regardless of what the express provision of the law is. If you want to be a civilian governor, be. You are a Nigerian. If you want to be a presidential candidate, be a presidential candidate. Well, we, can, we can carry that in with some other positions, not with the economy. The number one person on the economy, monetary policies that should uh, be fiscal policies that should be done uh, with, without uh, any leanings. Okay. Well, just, just one, 
I mean, you, you've referenced it. She's asked a question like twice or so about the same question. And that is this vexed issue of 8812 of the Electoral Act. Yes. As at today, is it a law? As at today, well, um, the issues are still fluid because there are still, there are still litigations on it. So I will not uh, pronounce categorically. But my opinion is that that provision of the law should be allowed to stand. No, I asked that question against the backdrop of, first of all, the High Court pronouncement. Yes. And then that uh, the court, court, of, court appeal. of Appeals yes. pronouncement. So that's, that's the position, that's yes. the angle that I'm yes. looking yes. at. It is from. still fluid because, you know, even though the position today by the Court of Appeal is not favorable. Um, In your opinion, what's the position of the Court of Appeal as of today? Well, there have been too many of those decisions in various uh, divisions. But what I, what I make is that uh, the, the, the court uh, obviously did not agree with uh, Justice Eko's uh, position. And uh, so uh, uh, the jumpings can be done by the governor, uh, but uh, not not the uh, House and Assembly, not either the Senate or National Assembly. You know, coming from Abegunde's case, you know, if it that uh, from one of those states. Now, that is the position as of today. But I think that in the best interest of this country, that's my thinking, personal thinking, that Section 8412 should be upheld to remain the law, to bring sanity. So, some, some governors have act, uh, acted on it, you know, activated it, told their political appointees who want to, be, to run for office, to go exactly. face their ambitions and all. But there are those who are wondering, maybe if the president did the same thing and gave that order or the party each of the political parties made that, you know, uh, a provision or a procedure in their own rules as well. Maybe it will give them now, 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 resigning three months is, 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 is useful. It is, go and look at the states where, they are, where the governors have gone that way. Um, you will agree with me that it is useful. Why will you, this is you not know what the civilian governor is saying. I will be civilian governor, we will be doing and be going for party. You know what it takes to run for presidency? Nocturnal meetings. I've never and tried, that. so... I, I, mean, I, mean, I mean, I mean, so... So many official assignments will be affected. Rather than you leave and someone focuses on that. So when you gather, look at how many people have bought tickets for the form for tickets in some political parties. With us at 100 million or 40 million, you have over 20 in some. That tells you that many, many persons who we are entrusting our governance in have other things they want to do. Uh, and that is why I want to ask, uh, Prof. Yes. So I, I the, support the objective... that the, the three months resignation. So it's, 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 we know that it's a serious business to run election. So, so, so as a result, the objective of 8412, yes. which is, you know, discipline uh, and to ensure uh, some stability in the, you know, political space. If you look at the response to it from, you know, even the National Assembly, has that objective been achieved? It, 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 the objective will never be achieved particularly outside the judicial process. That's why the judicial process is there to stabilize it. The politician will, dis will, will assess it from the point that favors him. Because politics is a selfish game. <laughs> you know, it depends on whether it is the opposition or the person benefiting from the law as it is. <laughs> well, it's an endless conversation <laughs> because I, I, was, I, I thought that we should, that uh, the, the issue of 8412 has been put to bed. And now this one that's 
not sleeping yet, 84.8. Well, let's just wait for the outcome of it. And there's an issue you raised, which I think is of concern. You said you haven't seen a law that, a bill that goes to the presidency and comes out expeditiously. Mm. Should we be concerned? Well, uh, uh, well, I, 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 I'm not concerned. The presidency has its own legal team. They have to scrutinize. They have to be sure. But you can see that even after the Electoral Act went back and forth, we're already amending it without practicing it. Hmm. Well, <laughs> Professor Paul Ananaba, Senior Advocate of Nigeria, thank you so much for, again for thank being you. here. It's always a delight to have you. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Ananaba. So, well, we'll take another break now. When we return, it's to look at one of the issues that Professor Ananaba referenced as a governance issue that needs attention. Stay with us. Yes, indeed. It's still Sunrise Daily on Channels Television. And uh, the talking points have found a way of gliding one into the other this morning. Our last guest was concerned about how very important issues have become casualties of the recent politicking, and that is the management of tertiary education. That's where we're headed this morning as the Senior Staff Academic uh, um, uh, Association of Nigerian Universities has proposed its own peculiar payment system that it says is going to be the solution to the problem of payment remuneration in Nigerian universities across board. And that's why we're welcoming the National President, Senior Staff Association of Nigerian Universities, who joins us from our Abuja studios, Mr. Mohammed Ibrahim. You're welcome to Sunrise Daily. Thank you for joining us. Good morning and thanks for having me. So let's start uh, this way, Mr. Mohammed. Uh, tell us a bit more about the Unified Peculiar Personnel Payroll System, UPPPS. Okay, yeah, it's actually called uh, U3PS, University Peculiar Payroll, uh, Personnel and Payroll System. Um, I may have to give you a bit of background of how this came about. Um, the federal government of Nigeria, uh, worried by the, as portrayed by them, the corruption that uh, occurs in the university system, especially issues surrounding bloated personnel costs, payment of salaries to people whom they feel were not existent in the university system, came up with the idea of in enrolling the universities also into the integrated payment uh, personnel uh, information system, that is IPPIS, which has hitherto was working for the uh, mainstream civil service uh, from the MDS. Now, uh, in 2019, uh, doing that, federal government invited the university, for, uh, the four university-based unions, made up of ASU, SANU, NASU, NAT, you know, and um, a presentation was made, and the impression given to us was that uh, government was interested in ensuring that uh, the university system runs, you know, seamless, and that payments are centralized from Abuja, and that people would not have issues surrounding payments about their salaries. Um, a lot of issues, you know, uh, discussions were made, and. Um, at the demonstrations, we raised some concerns about peculiarities of the university system because the university operates you know, differently from the way the mainstream civil service you know, operates. You know, it has some uh, things that are not existent in the mainstream civil service. And um, uh, government took some of these uh, suggestions and they came back to us to convince uh, stakeholders that those concerns were addressed. So of the four university-based unions, three keyed in, Sanu, Nasu, and Nat. Asu, at that point, you know, opted out. Now, we immediately, this thing, uh, this system was uh, kick-started. Uh, it was something that um, we never envisaged. That is, haphazard payments, mutilation in salaries, 
and um, el el the system became so confused that uh, salaries could no longer be I mean uh, could no longer be paid without issues. Vice chancellors were paid salaries of drivers, registrars were paid salaries of uh, cleaners, you know, lecturers, you know, professors were paid salaries of uh, security men. So it became an issue that we felt that um, our decision to key in was actually a mistake. And challenged by this, we felt that as professionals, because in Sanu, uh, we are mainly of the non-teaching cadre, and we are a group of professionals. It is in, uh, only in Sanu and uh, Nasu that you find, you know, co-professionals in accountants, uh, you know, uh, engineers, ICT experts, um, architects, and name them. So we were challenged by this, and we felt that as, a, as, as members of staff who work in the citizens of learning, we should not just complain, but should come up with a solution, present to government, and uh, see how this can help you know, ease the situation. So we commissioned our members who are uh, basically the experts um, from the ICT, from the bursary, uh, because the members of SANU and NASU are the ones preparing and paying salaries in the universities. So this is our core mandate. So we came up uh, with this uh, payment solution called uh, U3PS, University Peculiar uh, Personnel and Payroll uh, System. Uh, it's a robust uh, IT solution that uh, accommodates and will uh, take charge and uh, pay the university uh, you know, uh, system without much ado. Uh, it is not uh, for only the non-teaching, but it is to take care of the whole university system. Um, it will uh, bring on board the flexibility of allowing staff to enjoy and access approved allowances by government, which does not exist in the current IPPIS. Because immediately IPPIS came on board, what we realized was that our members were shortchanged. Most of the uh, allowances that, were, they were uh, that they were supposed to get or that they were getting, you know, were completely chopped off. And we became, we became poorer. And uh, that, that, that was uh, the reason why people started complaining. Now, in U3PS, you find um, the robust uh, uh, flexibility of all these subheads being mentioned uh, in the system. And that there are checks and balances because the registry is the point of entry. If a staff is employed or is already existing, he is captured by the personnel you know, department. And then the bursary you know, takes charge of the paroling. And then the audit trail is also done by the audit unit in the universities. So uh, the system is really so flexible and friendly that members of staff in the university community will not have to suffer on toll hardship that we are currently facing, you know, being, uh, while using the IPPIS solution. Um, Mr. Mohammed, where does that leave UTAS, the university tertiary payment system proposed by ASU? And it would seem like um, ASU, SANU, NASU are working at cross purposes now that you have come up with U3PS. Well, uh, I may not be competent to speak about UTAS because I'm not a member of ASU. And ASU did not, uh, you know, uh, cost us or did not come to us to ask for, you know, key uh, assistance as, as, it may, as it were. Because like I said, issues surrounding payment of salaries is basically our core mandate. Members of staff who work in the bursary are the non-teaching cadre staff. We have accountants who work there, and those that work also in the ICT are majorly our members. So uh, when ASU came up with the idea of UTAS, we were not aware, and we also have already have decided to come up with this uh, U3PS, which we have presented to government yesterday, and um, we are waiting to face the agency of government that is uh, mandated to do the integrity test. So, uh, 
I may not be able to say much about UTAS because I am not uh, fully involved in what UTAS is all about. But um, ASU, NASU, NAT are all within the academic community. You would agree with that. I'd like to ask again that why the age-long rivalry between ASU, SANU and NASU? And where does that leave the negotiation really? Because then government has to contend with looking into the demand of ASU for UTAS and uh, SANU, NASU, NAT for U3PS. Well, I, I do not want to believe there's any rivalry between uh, ASU and NASU or SANU because uh, university uh, is a community where people are offered jobs to do. Uh, when you are appointed, you had a choice to apply for either to teach or to do the administrative work. So if you are in the admin cadre, and you seem to envy who is uh, the person who is in the academic cadre, you must be wasting your time because that is his own calling and you have a different calling. So for me and for most of us, we do not believe there is any rivalry that exists between us. Rather, we are colleagues, we play uh, complementary roles, everybody has his own area of mandate and um, everybody has a, his job, his or her job carved out for him or her and therefore, uh, those of us that are in the non-teaching cadre is our decision and is our, uh, our decision to, you know, take the job of the non-teaching while those that are doing the teaching uh, jobs have also their jobs to do. So uh, the university uh, cannot operate with, uh, without these uh, different cate uh, categories of staff. The university has three core mandates teaching, research, and community service. The non-teaching, if an university is established today, the first three appointments are, that are made are appointments that is purely for administrative purposes. The vice chancellor, the registrar, and the bossa. Then you now talk about other principal officers like the uh, librarian. Before any other issues are considered, so the non-teaching staff have the mandate to make the environment convenient, comfortable, and the atmosphere conducive for every stakeholder in the university. As you may know, the most important key stakeholders in the university system are the students. So we are all there for the students. And we are there to provide services for the staff and the students. Therefore, for the teaching staff, they are to come, teach, conduct researches, and their stay in that university cannot be complete. They cannot be able to operate without the services of the non-teaching staff. That's why I say we play, make, we play, uh, play complementary uh, services, uh, roles, sorry. Um, we take charge of water supply, security services, administrative uh, payments. Uh, we also provide accommodation. And everything that makes the system works, we oil the engine of the system. Okay, well, and therefore, I, I, we I'm know exactly Conway, what we are there to do. Well, yes. one, one of the issues that comes to mind for me is how optimistic are you that the federal government of Nigeria, you know, Ministry of Education, Ministry of Labor, NIDA, any of them would favor U3PS over IPS, given what has happened to the UTAS proposed by ASU. How optimistic are you? Well, you see, the whole idea is that Everybody, there is no longer a debate that IPS is not serving the purposes that it is supposed to. It is very clear. Even those in the ministries and other departments of government do complain about issues surrounding payments through IPS. More talk more of uh, or talk less of those of us in the university that have seen it. Now, like I said, challenged by these uh, issues surrounding IPS inconsistencies in, in payment. We came with this solution. 
and it is now left to government. If truly what they want is to solve this problem, if truly what they want is to have a, uh, a hitch free system you know, in the university where members of staff can access their pay without delay, where members of staff can be paid without all the hustles, where if you have issues, you may not have to start running from your own uh, you know, domiciled area to Abuja to come and stay two, three, four days before you sort problems with the IPPIS. So it is now left to government to look at what we have presented vis-a-vis okay. -vis other solutions. Mm. We are open to discussions. We are open to criticisms. If they feel what we have presented will solve the problem, fine and good. If they want to have a handshake with what they have, we are open to give the, we are giving solutions. Well, uh, we Cameron, are not one, one trying the, to create additional you know, on problems. On that same matter, remember that it was how, was just recently, not too long ago, the Minister of State for Education said, the employee cannot dictate to the employer how they want to be paid. As far as they're concerned, the, the government is concerned, IPS is their chosen uh, payment system. And no association such as yours can determine to them, to government, the employer, how they will pay you, the employee. How do you respond to that? I think that is where, uh, with all due respect, probably uh, he got it wrong. We are not dictating to government how we should be paid or the means we should be paid. But what we are saying is that what government has brought on board is not serving the purpose. And because we work in a system that provides solutions, we are coming up with solutions. And it is not proper to keep doing something the same way and you know, expecting uh, different results. IPs is not serving us. Yeah. IPs is creating problems. Yeah. How far has and that therefore, conversation gone? And therefore, there is a U3PS Option, good. How far has that conversation with government gone so far? When the presentation was made, what are the promises? What are the assurances that it will even be considered at all? Well, as you may be aware, we only presented yesterday and government was happy. The Minister of Education was there in person. He received it on behalf of government and that he did mention that this will be subjected to all that is required and that they are not averse to solving problems that are identified currently. Mm. And we are happy with that statement. But do you also recall that one of the issues was that government you know, wanted their own party, maybe officials of NIDA, to be a part of the process so that you know, whatever issues may arise uh, would be dealt with from the roots. Is, is there any conversation between Sanu Nasu and any official of government to ensure that it meets, you know, um, the standard that's required? Well, what we have done was that after setting up a technical team from the best brands that we have, you know, populated amongst our membership, we subjected uh, the solution that we have come up with as a U3PS to a forum where we got inputs from professionals who are in the industry. And we have presented to government. The onus is now on government to look at it and then uh, with a view to accepting whatever solution that we have provided. If truly they are willing to now solve this canker worm of making th life easier, I mean, I mean, for the members of staff who work in the university system, no member of staff in the university today is happy with the way salaries are paid, especially the salaries that are coming. You don't even determine what you will get uh, today, this month, next month. And uh, I can tell you a typical case of myself. I keep getting different salaries at least for about three or six, for between three and six months. And then you, you are, sometimes you get overpaid, sometimes you get underpaid. Sometimes you are given somebody's salary. So all these were the issues that we looked at. And then we found out that there are certain things that the IPPIS did not bring on board. And that very is the quickly, flexibility very quickly, Mr. and Mohammed, the peculiarity let, let's that manage is our time. Uh, very, uh, within the university system. Very, very yes. quickly. Um, it's been three weeks into your own warning strike. And... Um, 
I would like you to articulate some of your demands, which again, I'd, I want to point out, if I'm wrong, correct me, is similar to some of ASU's demands. So in that regard, what's the update in your negotiations with government uh, concerning your demands and how soon will there be an end to your strike? Well, um, we have met with government uh, and discussions are ongoing. Offers have been made and the you know, unions or our union operates uh, in a system where we as leaders are only messengers to our principals who are populated at the level of membership in the different branches of Nigerian universities. We have accepted those offers and that we are presenting them to our members and once we get their note, we come back to government and then let the government know. But you see, the problem has been that they say once beaten, twice shy. Promises have been made. In the last two years, we have been on this uh, rigmarole. Government have been promising, and then all these promises have never seen the light of the day. And therefore, you get, you know, you have to be circumspect when you are dealing with government these days. And therefore, it, that is the reason why that the offers that have just been made to us will now be tabled before our membership and that we get the note of our membership and then re refer back to government uh, as the case may be. We have completely run out of time. Mr. Mohammed Ibrahim, National President, uh, Senior Staff um, Association of Nigerian Universities, thank you very much uh, for bringing us up to speed on negotiations with government and your proposal on uh, to the solution to some of the biggest problems plaguing Nigerian universities. Thank you for coming on Sunrise Daily. Thank you very much. Well, next is your own comments very, very quickly. Professor Imonoka Enakena says, state and federal universities should allow for the minimal payment of school fees so that universities will become financially independent of government resources. Otherwise, this impasse between university staff and government won't end. And Festus Akimboyewa says, it seems INEC has developed their timelines based on the new legislation, but INEC has room for flexibility. It should listen to the parties and accommodate their concerns. To rush the process could lead to defective primaries. Architect Abdul Salam says, I totally support INEC on not tampering with the timeline. We're addicted to postponement in this country. If we follow the body language of the political parties, the general elections will also be postponed. Oh dear. Oh dear. <laughs> Comrade Dari says, INEC is constitutionally empowered to organize and conduct elections in Nigeria. Therefore, as an independent commission, it is within the purview of INEC to determine dates and timetable for elections in Nigeria. And by so doing, IPAC request is quite illogical. Ola Guju Oladele says, INEC does not regulate morality, but conforms to the legal framework on who has or doesn't have rights to contest. People are wary of the untrustworthy electoral process, and we only rely on the law and constitution and not our collective votes to stop politicians. Mm, indeed. Food for thought there. And it reminds me of what Professor Ananaba says. If mm. indeed uh, INEC goes ahead to postpone uh, the timeline for Trust primaries. It's yes. going to be dwindled. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, that's the much of the program we can take today. Thank you so much for being a part of it and have a wonderful day. I'm Ayo Makinde. And Bukola Samuel Wemimo. Bye for now. <laughs>